Top five things that were not guns at Iwa and Enforce Tech. I did this video for Shot Show. You guys seem to enjoy it a lot, so let's run it back again for Iwa and Enforce Tech. If you like our content, consider supporting us on Subscribestar. We don't do pay for play reviews on TFB TV. We can be independent because of your support. 511 covered our travel expenses to the show this year. I don't review their products, right? So I don't see it as like a conflict of interest, but you guys actually pay our bills. So please support us on Subscribestar so we can remain independent. Number five, the Black Trident Ultra Low Visibility Plate Carrier. This is designed to be a plate carrier that's an absolute minimalist plate carrier. Even though you can add on accessories if you want to, this PC is meant to provide the same level of concealability as like an old school level two soft vest that dudes used to wear under their shirts while allowing you to use plates that can provide rifle level protection while still being easy to conceal under your clothes if you need to. I'm always impressed with the guys at Black Trident. I've seen their manufacturing operation in Austria. It's gonna be a shitty day, I think, for US gear companies if and when Black Trident actually start selling shit in the US like they keep threatening to do. This one caught some flack in the comments, understandably, because it's priced at 600 fucking euro, which is, I mean, that's crazy, but you never know. I mean, first of all, they make good stuff, and if a gear supplier lands a major contract for a lot of money per unit, it isn't like they can then turn around and sell it cheaper on the commercial market, which probably explains why a lot of Gucci gear manufacturers charge what they charge. They need to preserve their edge, I guess, or their profitability on the government side, whatever. Number four, controversy slot. Is that dude grabbing his dicky? Nope, he's pulling his glicky. Corvus Defensio, who's primarily known for manufacturing high-end AUG accessories, apparently makes holsters. I had no idea. Corvus has a Kydex holster with removable and interchangeable clips. That's a deep carry option. I'm talking this holster can stuff a Glock 43, 43X, or 48 so far down your pants that you could theoretically wear it without a shirt, and the gun would still be concealed. I mean that. You can draw one-handed or two-handed, even though the draw is super unconventional. But just because the draw is unconventional doesn't mean that it's not functional. And indeed, this is a draw that has been recognized as being fast and lethal. If you look at these old videos of the Sparrow Hitmen, which were Filipino assassins, these were little small dudes that could conceal like a full-size 1911 GI and jam it completely down their pants, but then they would draw them out quickly by, they would push up on the muzzle, just like you do with this holster, with their support hand, and they would draw and fire with their dominant hand, and they would do it in like less than half a second. The following demonstrations illustrate the deadly prowess of the Sparrow Hitman. Since the weapon must be completely concealed, slender persons would seem to have an advantage. The Hitman tapes the grip, which defeats the squeeze handle safety. The slide safety is down or off. This enables the shooter to fire even with a poor grip on the weapon. Thus, it is necessary only to draw the weapon and squeeze the trigger. Only one round is loaded in the chamber. So this is nothing new. It's just an improvement on an unconventional but effective method of carry that's actually been around for half a century. It's controversial because people in this gun community will simultaneously cry about the lack of originality in the business, but if they see something that's truly new to them, but it doesn't adhere to what they see as established or proven or traditional, then it automatically sucks. Bit of a catch-22, but I see this holster as a catch-15 in your chest. If you've got someone who's willing to train up with it, you could probably get a pretty fast draw. Yes, it does look super uncomfortable, but I wore it and I walked around the booth with a Glock 43 blue gun in my jeans, and it was actually fine. It moves the muzzle too, further down. So instead of the muzzle pointing directly at your dick and balls like standard appendix carry, it's right next to your femoral artery so you can just bleed out and die instead of living with the shame of self-owning your pecker, you polymer frame striker fired eunuch son of a bitch. Number three is the sick ass chest holster made for an unnamed European special forces unit that specializes in underwater operations. Well, I know who it is but I'm not allowed to name them in this video. I didn't make a video about this, but it was featured on the video and the thumbnail for the AIRX Delta Maritime pistol, a handgun that Slovenian manufacturer AIRX made as a blend of a durable duty gun 
and a suitable match gun that would be optimized for use in underwater and maritime operations. A lot of you commented about the holster in the comments. It's a cool handgun, even cooler holster. Shit, I might switch to carrying a Delta if they can tell me where I can get this nasty ass Scuba Steve holster for it. Number two, gonna be our sponsor, 511, not just because they're there it is, 511. Not just because they're our beloved and faithful for almost 10 years sponsor 511, because they honestly had two or three things that do deserve a spot on this list. So in a way, 511 kind of screwed themselves by sponsoring the channel because I only put one of their items on this list, so you guys don't think that I'm shilling them wall to wall here. I really like the slim cut Euro VXI BDUs a lot, for example, which we're not going to get in the US, but this this is something I'm genuinely hyped about, the 511 belly band. I've been belly banding since college. You can carry anywhere along your waistband, deep carry, high carry, traditional inside the waistband carry, appendix, strong side, whatever, super flexible. And it's so easy to carry even a big gun, you'll be halfway done getting mugged by an overpass hobo with a piece of rebar before you remember you're carrying a gun. It's also inexpensive. You don't need a belt. There are downsides like weak retention and it might get you a little sweaty in the summer, but a good belly band will protect the trigger enough where you can't activate it while the gun's holstered. Try it when you get one. No, on an unloaded gun, genius. In fact, I've recommended belly bands to a lot of people who can't wear a belt or don't wear a belt or who need ultra deep concealment for whatever reason and no one's disliked it yet. This belly band's the best I've ever seen because it's ambidextrous. It's got this cool hourglass shape holster retention pocket. It's modular. You can either go just pistol. You can add a mag or two, a first aid kit, a radio and an AR-15 magazine as high speed or low drag as you want. Throw a cat in there, why not? I absolutely, absolutely love this. Truly my favorite thing at the show, but unfortunately it won't be available in the US, so I can't call it the number one. And you guys would also call me a shill. Now the good news is I know a guy who's got some swing with these Californians, so I'll see what I can do about getting these to the States for you guys. But let me know if you would be interested in the comments because I don't want to be like, hey, 511, bring this shit over and then no one buys it except for me. Even though the belly band was my favorite, there's no doubt that the crowd favorite came from Scandinavian madman Hakan Spur, an absolute genius when it comes to designing optic mount solutions. Seriously, guy blows my mind every year. People give him a problem. He comes up with an elegant, simple, reasonably priced solution. It's no wonder that CZ bought him out a couple of years ago. This year, Spur showed off an aimpoint red dot and magnifier combo all in one piece. You can either swing the magnifier out of the way where it'll rest against your pick rail, protecting it from impact, or you can press like this cross bolt safety button and yank the whole thing out, throw it in your dump pouch or whatever. It lines up perfectly with your red dot. You also have the option to add a few extra inches of Picatinny rail forward of the mount for whatever laser aiming solutions that you might want to add on. And oh yeah, it also has this neato little backup iron sight built in. All this and only takes up a few inches of rail. I would think you could probably mount this entire setup on an AR-15 without any handguard because of its monolithic and efficient design. You get your optic, your magnifier, your rear sight, and your lamb all in one piece of gear. In a rare occasion for TFB TV, viewer comments were universally positive for this brilliant setup. Ian McCollum himself told me this was probably his favorite thing at the show. So I've got to say, well done, Mr. Spur, and well done to us because we're done. That was it. That was the last EWA Enforce Tech video until next year. We turned out a whole shitload of them. You guys watched a whole shitload of them. Thank you so much, guys. Really, you guys watching the channel, it means so much to me. Stay tuned because I am going to make a video on how I accidentally brought 40 or 50 of you to a gay bar in Germany. Really sorry about that. I'll explain next week. Take care.